Good afternoon, everyone. This is T3 Live Editor-in-Chief John Darcy here to give you a little afternoon update on the market. It's about 1 o'clock, and the market's been trading in a fairly tight range since the gap down this morning. Uh, people are attributing that gap down this morning to fears about a potential government shutdown. But the more I've read today, the more people are talking about how this potential government shutdown might actually be a good thing because it could expedite the debate about the debt ceiling, which is a much more significant issue. It would be much more detrimental to the United States if we didn't raise the debt ceiling and started defaulting on some of our debt than it would be to have the government shut down for what will probably be a short period of time. So, you know, while people are talking about, yeah, it is prudent to have a little bit lower risk heading into the weekend, potential headline uh, could weigh on the market, but it's really not the end of the world. So uh, I wouldn't be scared too much out of positions that you like. And there has been things to do in this market. You know, we talked this morning. The handful of stocks I talked about this morning are some of the ones that are moving uh, really well, the stuff I talked about in the morning call. First, we'll take a look at the chart of the S&P just to give you a visual of what we've seen today. And we have taken back a little bit of those pre-market uh, losses. We're back here right into the 21-day, uh, retesting this pivot low right here. So that'll be the area we'll be watching to see if we can get a close back above that pivot low or whether we end up closing below it. If we close below it, it could definitely be a little bit of a, a complexion change. I mean a complexion change from yesterday, I would say. Yesterday, people thought maybe this is the beginning of a little bounce after a five-day pull-in. Uh, but if we do close below this pivot today, it could lead people to believe that we could get a little bit deeper correction. We could fill this gap uh, from back here on September 10th. Uh, so something to keep an eye on there. But talk about individual stock action. I think that's where the edge is right now. And this morning, I talked about the two names in tech that have really been the standouts while others have uh, sort of been mixed recently have been Facebook and Tesla. Those two of the ones that traders have been all over. Take a look at the chart of Facebook. They're both making new highs again today. Facebook was up big this morning, uh, actually came back in from its pre-market highs, but has regained that $51 price uh, that it was at pre-market. So another really uh, impressive day of action for Facebook and one that I think will continue into the 50s, into the mid-50s, potentially into the high 50s. But I think earnings this season will probably have a lot to do with uh, how far this one can go but just the positive news and positive buzz keeps on coming for Facebook. Uh, China's allowing it in the Shanghai free trade zone. Um, you know, they're, they're adding potentially video ads to, their, to the news feeds that's going to potentially drive a lot of revenue. Uh, and they keep getting upgrades from Wall Street. Analysts love this stock right now. Institutions want to own it. Any dip, it seems like people are, are rushing in to buy. So if you do get a dip on Facebook, I think it's a buying opportunity still, even though it's in the $50 area. And like I said, earnings will have a, a lot to do with how far it goes. Take a look at Tesla, another new high for Tesla. This is one that a lot of momentum guys talked about when this stock reached $100. They said it's overvalued at $100, but because of the mechanics of this trade, it, it could see $200 before it sees a meaningful pullback. And that has proved to be prophetic as uh, Tesla does seem like it's on a path to $200 a share. Just because of the big short interest, uh, the growth that you're seeing, even though they don't make a ton of money yet, uh, they're, they're really disruptive in the technology industry. And it's being priced not as a car company, but it's being priced as a tech stock uh, that could revolutionize de several different areas of the transportation industry, and not just electric cars, potentially self-driving cars, all that type of stuff. Elon Musk has acknowledged that right now, given what they've accomplished so far, the, the stock is a little bit overvalued, but that's not to say in the future they can't grow into that price. Uh, he's never said that. So it's one that I, I would say you have to continue to obey the price action. You know, what should happen and what is actually happening are two very different things. And obviously, as technical analysts, we like to focus on the price action, what is happening. And right now, Tesla is one that has barely breached its 21-day at all in 2013. And, and the price action continues to be very bullish. A little bit tough to chase here, but could have a little bit more upside before it has another pullback. Another thing we talked about this morning was the solars, especially the small cap solars are the ones that have been acting best recently. We talk about a stock like Trina Solar, TSL. One that I talked about in the morning call this morning again, I said a little bit of a, a topping tail. I wouldn't call it a topping tail yesterday, just a little bit of a momentum slowed down a little bit. But then when you saw the gap up pre-market this morning to take you back near the highs from yesterday, that was a sign that uh, all that bullish momentum was still in those small cap solar names. And as you can see, incredible breakout uh, today from Trina Solar, TSL, another one in the group, Jasso. Uh, this is a, a stock from days gone by. I remember Steve LeVay used to trade this one years ago uh, when this stock was in vogue. You zoom back out, uh, as you can see it used to be a lot more higher price, split adjusted. Um, but you go back, Jasso coming back into play a little bit. Great breakout. This was a more calculated pattern than one like TSL that had already broken out a little bit. A really nice action there. YGE is the one that I said this morning had the nicer setup of the small cap 
um, solar stocks. And as you can see, it broke out of this uh, range that had been in place for most of September. Really impressive extension today there. Uh, was JKS is the last one that I've been looking at. Really nice methodical four-day, five-day move higher for uh, JKS. So sector rotation has been the name of the game in 2013. Money rotating back into solar a little bit. When you talk about FSLR, I, I tweeted that I think it could get back in the game too. It's one of the, uh, what is the biggest solar player. Uh, so it's, it's not really getting the type of bid that the smaller cap names are getting right now. But it looks like it has a little bit of a rounding bottom type formation after this gap down. And, and it was weak after the gap down too. But like I said, it has a little bit of a rounding bottom type forming. If it gets into the gap, I think it could definitely penetrate the gap a little bit and uh, get back in vogue a little bit. So uh, another name. Mark Sperling's trade idea of the week has been an outstanding newsletter. We've got uh, tremendous feedback on it, and uh, one of the plays he brought to our attention a few weeks ago was Celgene. Uh, the biotech stocks have been incredibly strong also in 2013, especially over the last few months. Uh, you've seen some money rotate out of some other more cyclical type sectors, uh, and the biotech names have taken a little bit of a leadership role. Celgene, one of the ones with the best pattern, and that's why we highlighted it on Mark Sperling's trade idea of the week a few weeks ago. CELG, you take a look at the chart. Really nice move yesterday sort of alerted you that this one uh, might get a little bit of momentum. And today it gapped down, but as soon as it took out yesterday's high, I think that was another great entry signal. Uh, and, and the momentum today has been outstanding. A break to new highs in Celgene. So uh, we talked about this upper level base, sort of a cup and handle type pattern that formed in this upper level base. Talk about this cup right here, handle here, or a great flag, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but really nice price action there. So there has been things to do today. Uh, there has been really nice price action and some individual names. I'm sure I didn't cover them all, but these are just some of the names that we've been focusing on uh, this morning in the morning call, recently in some of our newsletters, and on the VTF. Uh, this has been John Darcy here for a little afternoon update. Scott might sneak in uh, after this to do a, a market recap after the afternoon action, but I expect things to be quiet uh, for the rest of the day. Uh, and, and definitely nothing wrong with taking a little less risk into the weekend with the headline risk of the government shutdown. But like I said, the government shut down, not the end of the world. Hopefully it spurs some more debate and decision making about uh, the debt ceiling, which is a much bigger issue that will be tackled later in the month. This has been John Darcy here for an afternoon update. Uh, we'll see you at the Daily Recap potentially.